Hey everybody, this is Kenny Cummins here. You are chilling with Kenny C right here on TMVCafe.com, bringing you entertainment to your ears. Um, super excited to be joined with my guest of the day, coming to you originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. And one of my favorite descriptors and one of my favorite things about this lady is that she has a very uniquely soulful voice and a cute country flair. I feel like, yes, this woman has won my heart already. Uh, She has her latest song called Long Gone John. That's available on all the DSPs, the the platform thingies. Super excited to be joined with my guest, Miss Maddie True. How's it going? Yay. Thank you so much, Kenny. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing real good. It's great to have this chat with you on this day. I'm very, right. very excited to have you on and mm-hmm. to get into your musical journey per se. Um, I, you know, and I listened to some of your music um before you got on. Um, I'm definitely a fan. Um, you thank can also you. thank your good friend Taylor Hughes for that because that's how I heard of you. Oh, I love that. She's awesome. So shout out to Taylor. She's awesome mm-hmm. as well. Um, so I definitely want to um, dive in and some of your recent music and uh, appearances and things that you got going on. Um, yeah. Uh, so obviously, one of the, th- of the songs that stood out to me is uh, Dear Loretta. Yes. Um, this was released shortly after her passing. Of course, we'll let her land legendary mm-hmm. singer um who passed away i believe it was last year um mm-hmm. so you did this song in a sold out house at the listening room and uh Again. a silent audience only days after she passed away yes so just talk about this song from mm-hmm. your perspective what was it like recording it how you feel about it and just just everything about this song. How did you feel about putting this song out, given the circumstances and everything? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I love country music so much, and I have since I was a little girl, and I do go all the way back to people like Loretta Lynn and Porter Wagner to now, you know, Carrie Underwood and Miranda. Um, and when I moved to Nashville, um, I found the song Dear Loretta, uh, you know, throughout my journey, sitting on Music Row, um, it was written by Josh Helms, Matt Willis, and Farron Rachels. And so I had worked at their publishing company and um, the uh, my bosses were like, well, you can look at some of the songs. And so I, I got to look through, you know, this incredible catalog and say, hey, you know, I want this one. And uh, Dear Loretta stuck out to me because of how much I love country music. And um, so then I took it and kind of made it my own with my producer, Luke Boishis. And fortunately, I, um, my friend, manager, mentor um, is friends. And now I am his friend is, uh, his name is Pearly Curtis. And he was Loretta Lynn's still player. Um, and he is on the track as well. So that was, that was really cool. I mean, this whole song has an awesome story. Um, and I'm so glad it's out now because just like living with it and seeing like all the different things come with it, um, has been so much fun. Uh, but yeah, she had passed sadly. And, um, I was singing at the listening room and my mom said that you could hear a pin drop and I could too. I mean, I just kind of, I just sang it and was like, this one's for her. And, um, you know, I, I just, in that moment singing, I was just, wow because everybody was just speechless and we were all just you know honoring country music right there and I was honoring her because she's one of the reasons I could have been up there on that stage you know so um that song means a lot to me just because it's it's journey has been so much fun and cool and her still players on the track that's that's legendary yeah Um, anybody that listens to country music uh, whether you're young or old, you you know who Loretta is. She's uh, <laughs> transcended. She's iconic, well-respected um, by her peers, 
by those like yourself that's you know that's out here in the music industry um uh, and having that song out and just the reception that it got and you got to work with people that has um been close to Loretta. Um, yeah. It's, it speaks volumes. Some things are just meant to happen. And yeah. uh, it did with the song. And it's a beautiful uh, song. And um, I'm very happy for you and for everyone involved in this song. Just paying homage and a tribute to uh, Miss Loretta. Thank it's, you. It's, Thank you so much. You know, so I, I got friends that tell me about Loretta all the time. It's, it's, it's just the stories and the performances. And, you know, I live in Kentucky, obviously. So okay, we got some uh, you got some history. stories over there. Uh huh. So, yeah, so you know, come on through. You know, come on through. You know, we'll, we'll welcome you. You know, so, uh -huh. you know um, so, <laughs> so check that out. Dear Loretta from Maddie True. Um, yes. that's available on the platforms. So let's go into the current, your recent release. Yay. It's, it's a song that not only did I play before you got here, mm -hmm. it's also included in my Instagram post, you know, snippet oh. of the song. Thank um, you. Long Gone John. Yes. Your latest it came out as of uh, late March. Uh-huh. Um, you went, wrote, you wrote the song. Um, Tony produced it. Shout out to Jeff. Um, <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Jeff and Tim and uh, and Chris. Uh, so when I when I when I saw the title, I'm thinking, shit, this is some baseball analogy, like long gone or something. Yeah. Okay. Was, so that was that 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 is what I that thought. Was your thought. <laughs> before this was before I played the song, and then when okay. I heard the song, oh, I see what she was going with it now. Yeah, he uh, gone. <laughs> I'm gone. Um, so <laughs> he definitely looked like he had a lot of fun recording this song. Uh, so talk about how that song came to be. One thousand percent. Um, yeah. So I wrote it with my friend Troy Castellano and Jeff McMahon. Um, and it came to be. I've wanted to write and release a song like this um, for a really long time, uh, just because I um, I value uh, friendship. That's one of my biggest values. I love having friends. I'm in a lot of weddings. And, um, you know, I just sit back and um, have a good time with everybody. And so I would hear these stories of, um, you know, friends and other girls just like completely forgetting to, the whole thing is like, the song is trying to remind people to remember their worth um, and not just girls and then it's guys too, but it's, it's basically geared towards <laughs> the girls to say that that guy's gone. But um, it was just me trying to uh, tell them in a way that I knew best that it was going to be okay. And that my gosh, he's gone. And um and I'm right here, you know, and I am sitting here chilling. I don't have a boyfriend and I've got a bottle of wine and, you know, we can hang out and then, you know, you'll get over this guy and then you'll be me with a bottle of wine just chilling because nothing's, you know, wrong and it's okay to move on. And it's just, I, I hope that you know that there are people out there to remind you that um, you're worth a lot and that, um you need to remember that you're worth a lot, essentially, which is what the song's about. So it's a, uh, it's to all my friends and uh, everything I wanted to say in the way that I know how to say it best. Yeah, this is definitely one of those songs when you and the gals got to get together, like, uh -huh. hey, let's let's talk, man, because you know, yeah, lots going on, lots going down that ain't supposed to be happening. Uh -huh. but, but we're gonna have this conversation. This, this, this is a therapy feel right here. This is a therapy feel, and it's sentimental. It's not like, oh, she's, we're talking about it again. It's it's sentimental. It's like, I'm so sorry. You're just learning your lesson. It's going to be okay. Let me go get the wine. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just, sometimes yeah. You, you just need a little lift up, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I get it. You know, fellas, we, we, we feel some kind of way, but sometimes 
you know, you female, you know, you female, you know, address the female, you know, your females, mm -hmm. your yeah. friends, friends, peers, all that. Like, man, we're going to get through this together. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. So, huh? I, I definitely dig the song. Um, Thank you. I, I definitely dig it. So, um, Long Gone John. This yes. is the latest from Maddie True. Uh, mm -hmm. That's also um, also available on the platforms as well. So mm -hmm. I see you did a acoustic video for that's the lonely talking. Yeah, um, you performed with Jimmy and uh, you know, Madeline and Johnny Lee Clark on guitar. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about just you know just putting these songs out. Now you get to you know it's, it hits different. Yeah, performing from that crowd, that audience. Uh, so talk about uh doing that acoustic uh version for that's the lonely talking with uh, Jimmy and Donnie. Yeah, so that was so much fun because um the way it's produced um you know uh is full band so like more you know blown out and then with uh, Jimmy and Donnie Lee, it was just me and uh two guitars and a mandolin. And so I thought that they uh, crushed it, like making it so beautiful and simple. And the mandolin really added a lot to it that I, you know, I mean, you just hear different sounds on your songs and then you get so excited because it's like, whoa, that would have been cool to put in the studio too, or whoa. Um, so it was really fun recording that with them. I, I believe it was my first time recording an acoustic video. Um, for one of my songs. And so it was a really good time. We were out at, um, if you're in Nashville at uh, McNamara's Pub um, up in Turk's Lounge, a uh, great place to hear music and eat. Anyways, they're really good friends. All of those men in that room that day are really great friends. Um, and so, uh, and having Jimmy on it was uh, special. And um, I actually, uh, you know, we help each other out and um, he actually just asked me to do his TV show. Um, so I'm also uh, in the process of pushing that acoustic video to support Jimmy as well, because uh, we're just working together a lot now. And so um, Jimmy Bowen and Friends TV show is out and I got to be on this season, which was really exciting as well. And um, so that is out as well. You can find it um, on YouTube and uh, my website, mattytree.com. Uh, but yeah, it was it was fun. Oh, and then on that TV show, you'll see Long Gone John as well. So but yeah, it was a it was a great day. And um, just doing an acoustic video in front of a camera, you know, it was fun. It was an experience. Yeah, absolutely. So, and you, you definitely bring up something that was very interesting. Um, obviously, like recording songs turns out good. Put it out there for people to hear it, and then when you do a, a live performance, whether it's a band or whether it's acoustic. You add some different to it compared to the studio version, and then when it's all said and done, like wow, should have add we should have added something like that to the studio version, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it hits different. Um, uh huh. So it's that's that's cool. Uh, yeah, a lot of options. Yeah, shout out to Jimmy. Um, that that was uh, that was an incredible performance. Um, and you know Nashville. Yes. That's like the 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 music city, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's that's the center of country music, pretty much. And uh, uh, so that's that's awesome. There's a lot of places to go for for live music. So and that's one of those places that you mentioned. Um, so you are not only doing acoustic, you're doing live bands, you're doing concerts. Uh, you've opened from Justin Moore. Mm -hmm. uh, for John, um, big and rich in your hometown. Yes. Uh, so um, obviously, like just performing in general, that's that's satisfying, but it yeah. has to be extra special having to do it in your hometown, especially mm -hmm. with one of the uh, big names of country music, like a big and rich. What was that like? Uh, getting to perform in your hometown. Yeah. It, along some of these acts. 
it was it was really cool and um you know it was it was fun um I lived there for about two years so I lived all around Memphis and Paris Tennessee was where this was at and I believe I was two years old and so uh coming back and doing that it was fun to watch my parents because all of our friends from back then came and that lived in Paris who were closer and then of course I had some Memphis friends come too but seeing my parents just you know because they had a daughter and then uh, years later now they're back in Paris where they had moved you know I lived in Memphis for a longer time but um uh just watching them and then seeing everybody come together and watch me since um I had graduated because not a lot of them had seen me since I graduated high school. So having everybody back in my hometown and watching it was just so surreal because they were part of the foundation of my confidence. Like those were the people that told me I was doing something right growing up after every show. So um, getting to do that. And then it was, it was out um, by a lake. I forget the lake's name right now, but I was just looking out at the water. I was looking at my family and my friends and then people I didn't know and then was backstage with Big and Rich. And it was just, I mean, you're talking about experiences with everything and we're talking about the hometown now, but I mean, it's really, it's every single one is so hard to take in because it's just so fun and cool and it's happening natural and um I, that was really that was the day that I had been waiting for since I was a little girl um because you know I mean it's big and rich and then also Cowboy Troy was there um as well and it was just it was a huge stage I had a full band and was just really in the zone I got a new outfit and I had my hair in I mean it was nonstop. I had a merch table. I'd never had that before. So getting to do all of it in a place where I felt comfortable and where I grew up and where, you know, my parents somewhat raised me was just so surreal. <laughs> yeah. Like performing in front of the hometown crowd. Yeah. Family, friends, fellow students. Yeah. You know, it's different. It, 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 it definitely Gets you pumped up per se. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I and uh yeah, yeah, so uh, it's it's awesome. Um, you know, when you get that opportunity, um and just manifest into reality. You say you dream about this as a little girl, mm -hmm. and now to see it come to fruition, to see one thousand percent. Um that's um it's satisfying and just like not it just makes you feel like man I was born for this and and, and people get yeah. to see it so yeah um, it was you know. it was very humbling yes so speaking of John this is something that I didn't even know so John he mm -hmm. was on the Dukes of Hazard TV show um uh -huh. even had she had him uh, sign a photo. You had a photograph of, uh, you know, for uh, an, a photograph for the moms. Yeah. Fan club as a kid. Now, I know Duke the Hazard, the movie, I think that was Jessica Simpson on there, but I didn't know John was on the TV. Uh, yes. So, no, dude. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. So we went out to um, Florida, me and Jim Brown, and we opened up for John Schneider. And um, I'll never forget, I called my mom when um, Jeff, my manager for a while, uh, he called me and he was like, hey, you know, you want to go up and up for Bo Duke? And I was like, well, heck yeah, I want to go up and up for Bo Duke. <laughs> so then I called my mom and I'll never forget it. I was like, mom, guess what? Just what? And I was like, do you know who John Schneider is? And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm opening up for him in Arcadia. And she goes, you shut your mouth like are you kidding me you know because I mean she's just had this daughter you know I think that John Schneider was my Zac Efron you know like that guy that's just in the yeah. spotlight like that's beautiful so I think that that was her Zac Efron and just again it's fun watching them take it in because she just had this kid and now I'm opening up for this guy that she signed up for like for his letters, because it wasn't, the fan mail was actually letters back then. So for Christmas, I, I get there and I'm like, Jeff, I gotta go. I gotta go ask John if we can 
get him to sign this picture for my mom and her sister. Her sister was also in the fan club. So I got to talk to him backstage and I'll never forget it because I was walking with Jeff and I was walking with him and we he was about to go on, but we were walking him to the stage, just talking about Nashville and all this stuff. And that was like another moment where it was like, my gosh, what? I mean, manifestation, like this is actually supposed to, you know, happen or whatever. But I was like, excuse me, you know, can, can you please sign this? My mom's a huge fan. <laughs> So we did. And then they were so excited at Christmas. I couldn't wait. I, I really couldn't. Dreams do indeed come true. <laughs> yeah. Dreams do come true. Uh, so that's that's good good for everybody involved. Uh, right. You know, and good for John for, for going along with it as well. So, <laughs> um, so one of the top, one of the most popular places in Nashville for live music is uh, the Bluebird Cafe. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of my Nashville friends and those that moved to Nashville has either performed there or got there for a drink or two, something like that. Responsibly, mm -hmm. of course. Um, but, yeah. you, <laughs> but you have a, uh, a story about your yeah. first time being there, which just so happens to be on the same weekend as your birthday. So talk yeah. about uh, your experience in the Bluebird Cafe. Yes. So Kenny, this weekend was wild because this happened the day before we opened up for John Schneider and the day of my birthday. So the day I opened up for John Schneider was my birthday. It was that Friday, but on that Thursday night, so when I moved to Nashville, I told myself, I'm like, I'm not going to go to one Bluebird show until I'm one of the writers up there. Well, I'll be darned. The guy that uh, wrote Long Gone John with me um, had a slot and he was like, hey, do you want to come and play the Bluebird? So I, I mean, as soon as Jeff called me, I, I was sobbing because I was like, oh my gosh, it's finally happening. I've been here. I guess it's it was seven years in. Yeah, seven years in, I got to play the Bluebird in Nashville. And uh, so, because I wanted it to happen organically and just mean mean more, you know? So um, we play the Bluebird um, and then I have uh, I have a few songs. One, one of the times, I'll never forget it, the crowd sang a song back to me. And then um, they had told um, somebody that it was my birthday. And so, or one of the players said it was my birthday. So he actually announced it to the crowd that it was. And the whole Bluebird Cafe sang happy birthday to me on my debut. And I just, I mean, I just sat there and looked at like my family, like this, this is happening right now. And then afterwards we went and got cheesecake. And then I got on a plane the next morning, got on a bus and we went and opened up for John Schneider. It's the best birthday weekend of my entire life. I will never forget it. <laughs> wow, so you got there. Yeah. Perform, and you got the birthday sing along. Yeah. On the same weekend that you met John. It was um, a lot of stimulation, Kenny. <laughs> if that ain't the best birthday weekend for nothing's you, gonna I don't know what is. I don't know. <laughs> nothing's going to beat it. it I, and I don't even care anymore. That, that was when it peaked. My birthday peaked right there. <laughs> Birthday peak. There you go. The birthday peak. The like, birthday peak. I mean, <laughs> yeah, everybody, you know, birthday peak. That's, you know, I think I've already reached my birthday peak. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, it's it's that moment. It's the memories, you know, just mm -hmm. being a musician, being around people that really, uh, um, that really takes fond of you um, and in your craft and, uh, Mm -hmm. You have you grown, you have evolved. You're definitely making a name for yourself. You, you're getting these opportunities left and right. You definitely are uh, living your dream, being a recording artist. And uh, you, you have so much, um, so much to come in your career as an artist. And, uh, uh, you know, Taylor Hughes, she, she got good taste and, and, you know, she's got, a lot of talented friends, and I'm happy to say that you're one of them. Oh, um, thank you so much, so, Kenny. Yeah, so she's great. It's it's pretty cool seeing um 
her thrive there and, you know, have, having someone like yourself, you know, just having that camaraderie, you mm -hmm. know, because music industry can be tough, can be brutal, mm -hmm. especially with women and country music in particular, because it's always a, a, like work twice as harder for, for bookings and radio mm -hmm. play and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, so just seeing someone like yourself getting these opportunities, seeing it all unfold is pretty cool. Um, and for those that that's going to see this on YouTube once I upload this, I noticed something in your background there, Miss True. I noticed a certain individual on your uh, left, I believe. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's a guitar. Uh, and then there's the iconic the legendary uh, Miss Dolly Parton. Miss uh, Dolly Parton, who's coming out with a rock album. Yeah, so, uh -huh. um, and I think she was just inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame recently. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and uh -huh. she, you know, I mean, she deserves all the flowers. She's like the godmother of country music at, at this point. Oh, yeah. You know, she's it, yes, like... It was, it was easy to hang her up in our household. Yes. <laughs> My roommate is also uh, in music, and so we've got everybody. She we she even put Taylor Swift up there for the Taylor Swift concert. She decorated the house for that. <laughs> so well, we got all yeah. these influences in our house. So. <laughs> uh, so speaking of Taylor, she was in Nashville this past weekend. She was. Um, man, I, I I got some friends that was there at Ooh. that concert. Um, I did too. I don't know how so, that went, but it definitely so. played a plane coming from. Um, Miami. Mm, yeah. Uh -huh. so, I mean, it was hitting the airport from other places too. It was wild down here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, you can check out Maddie True. Check out her website at maddietrue.com. That's M A D D Y E, not M A D D Y. Uh, mm -hmm. but, you know, put, put the Y E and uh, put the E in there and true <laughs> as in T R E W dot com. And check that website for all the information, upcoming shows, and um, potentially new music that's that she's got on the way. She'll keep you posted on all that. So, uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, I see um you're gonna be performing um with Confederate Railroad, I believe. Uh, on yeah. actually that was last month. Actually, yeah, that was last uh, so, month. <laughs> But it was so, fun. <laughs> so, so talk about that show. What was that like with Jim, Derek, and, and Railroad? What was that whole experience <laughs> for you? Yeah, um, that one was really fun. Um, you know, going out with Jim and Derek, I, that was my second time out with Derek or third. I can't remember. Derek St. Holmes is awesome. Oh, my gosh. Go go to a Derek St. Holmes show. You're welcome. He's great. And Jim Brown. Um, very lucky uh, for Jim Brown because he's the one that takes me out with, you know, John Schneider and Confederate Railroad. And, um, you know, uh, so I'm very grateful for them and Confederate Railroad. This uh, last show, I was backstage, you know, talking to everybody after I did my set. I think I, my set went well. Everybody else's did, too. And then I'm, I'm back there talking to Confederate Railroad and I'm like, you know, hey. Uh, I'm Maddie True. I'm from Memphis. All this stuff, whatever, whatever. Well, then they get on stage, and I'm I'm standing backstage with my uh, guitar player, and they're like, "Okay, this next one is for Maddie True," and they start playing Queen of Memphis. They played Queen of Memphis, which was one of their big hits, and they said it was about me, or they said it was for me. So I'm gonna take it home and own it that they just said I was the Queen of Memphis. <laughs> hey, when anybody says dedicated to your name, uh -huh. you, you gotta oh, yeah. take it. You gotta oh, yeah. take it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so great! It's great to have you on the show and having this conversation with you. Uh, check out um, Dear Loretta, Long Gone John. Yes. Uh, check out her songs on all the platforms. She's got more music on the way. Uh, again, check out the met, uh, the website, maddietrue.com uh, for more information. And uh, thank you for your time. I truly appreciate 
having you here and uh, wishing you continued success in your music. And uh, I will let you know, I will be adding Long Gone John on a future Music uh, Music Monday jukebox show. It's going to be on the future playlist. Oh, uh, thank so you. I'll, once I tag you, you know when the song's going to get played. Thank so, you. Awesome. So, I appreciate you, Kenny. Thank this you. This has been fun. Great chatting with you. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your week. Yes, you too. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.